This is a popular Keen Engineering dry washer fitted with a electric motor. It is also possible to hand crank it. I am going to perform several modifications because as it is from Keen Engineering, it is not actually fit to use. This has not always been the case. Uh, 11, 12 years ago I had a similar dry washer from Keen Engineering and it was manufactured uh, much better than the new ones. I'm going to make several points about the washer that I am not happy with. Cost a bit more than $800 and as it is in my opinion it's not worth $800. Fortunately my brother angry not so old hippie here on YouTube purchased this for me. First off it is vitally important that if you buy one you need a 7 16 box wrench 1 8 hex and 5 32 hex tool. The dry washer does not have a tool bag or a tool bin to put those vital tools in. So one of the modifications is to add maybe here a tool bin to keep those. Also another thing that purchasers will want to get spares of are these set screws. There's one there that the 532nd hex key goes into. There's one here for the 1 8th hex key and another one there. There's also the set screw here. This is this pulley is for the hand crank and the the crank actually goes on this um, piece here. Most of the bolts on this device, the hex heads are 7 16 So, and you have thumb screws for those. Okay, regarding modifications, several things that I think are necessary. You will take a look at the hopper bin here is supported by a bar. It's, uh, what is that? A little bit more than a quarter inch? 5 sixteenths? You will notice that the weight of the hopper bends the bar a little so it's bowed or bowled a little. You will also notice see that wear right there? And the wear marks here from about there up to here and from about here to here. The hopper is moving back and forth. This is a bad thing. So one modification is to support the hopper by pressure upwards and then to center the hopper as it is in operation so it does not move left and right like that. You'll notice that it swings farther in one direction than the other. We want to have that puppy centered. So we need to measure center point from this point to that point and mark where the center is and then measure the gap from point to point and mark where that center is and then line up the centers and then put half inch PVC in spacers. This is the modification that YouTube user Mobile Tech did on his. He has an identical uh, dry washer and that will greatly improve the operation, reduce wear and tear. Second modification this support strut, it is supposed to be um, mildly adjustable. There's three mounting holes 
in their support strut. I've taken the opposite sides off that you can see here, three holes. And there's also a hook end. And it goes in like that. This is bad. This is bad, bad, bad. First off, this should not be a hook. It should be a hole. And since you already need to use the wrench on the top bolt, there's no point in having that hook there. It should be a hole. It also should be longer. And there should also be more holes at the top. You've got the three holes at the bottom. You should also have three holes at the top. So that the whiffle plate can actually go lower if necessary. <clears throat> the plate for the whistles raises and lowers depending on the material that is going through. So having a small adjustment option is not enough. And having this as a hook instead of a hole was just wrong. I mean, just wrong. Another adjustment or modification necessary. The hopper has no way of keeping open without a human being using an arm to lift it. That means that when you're removing the whistle, you have to hold the hopper up with one arm and remove the whistle board with the second arm. This is not a problem when removing the whistle board. It is a problem when putting it back in. A person needs at least three arms to get that whistle board back into the dry washer. So this has to have a way to keep it open and all the way up without a human being holding it. So it needs a uh, additional pole or something clipped here that will go all the way down to perhaps here so that you can add that um, I don't know, brace so that it is all the way open and that brace uh, there's enough space here so that if you add that brace and you just run it along here and have it hanging out over here it's still out of the way so that when you need to use it you just bring that brace back down and you can rest it here perhaps because as that is it's a pain in the ass to get the whistle board back in also another modification this mounting tab is in backwards. See that space between the mounting tab and the dry washer? There's an angle bracket facing the wrong way. Rather than taking that off and welding it back on, I suggest just putting a spacer in between. I actually have some uh, aluminum spacers that's about a quarter inch wide and it's drilled with a center hole. Otherwise when you put the big thumb screw in there to hold the whistle board in, you're putting a lot of pressure on that spacer bar shoving it up against the dry washer. There are other problems, in my opinion, with the dry washer, which I will show you in uh, by taking the whistle board out. This is the whistle board. You have adhesive, globs of adhesive on each side. Chief problem with this is this foam rubber here that is used to kind of help it uh, maintain a 
um, somewhat airtight seal because this is a baffle bellows uh, device. This foam is not going to last very long. Now we already see it deforms at the pinch points. I would have used neoprene, uh, thicker rubber, instead of what has been used. Another problem, the fiberglass sheet in here, I assume that's fiberglass, I don't know what that is, has been scored so that the end can be bent over and fitted against the bottom here. I don't know if you can see that, but the score mark has actually been on the wrong side. Not only does it look shitty, but that does not is not conducive to an airtight seal. Another problem, since it is operated by a bellows, there's a lot of holes in the device where air goes through. See these pop rivets? They go all the way through into the bellows area, and when the device is operating, air comes out through the pop rivets. You've got holes here in the pop rivets that go into the bellows. That is not a good thing. So, that's some of the points I would like uh, Keen Engineering to address. Because, uh, as it is, I would not recommend buying one of these. The dry washer is operated by bellow, bellows. The motor drives this push rod and operates the bellows. There is a problem with the internal flapper valve that's made out of neoprene, so I've turned the device towards the sun so that you can take a look. We'll zoom in to the flapper valve. It's about a quarter inch thick. Notice that it is bowed and that it does not seat flat and it does not seat firmly over the air intake hole. That's the air intake hole. Notice there are also pop rivet heads seated around the hole that the flapper valve is resting on, which is also a bad thing to do. When air is drawn into this, the flapper valve is supposed to seat so that you get a fairly decent um, airtight seal, and then the air is pushed through the fabric on the whiffle board So that your um, material is blown upwards and this is also shaking so that all of the heavy material is shaken off of the wiffle board and all your light material and uh, well, I shouldn't say light but your pay dirt stays in the wiffles. But without that va pa flapper valve seating properly you're not going to get as much air as um, you would like, or I would like. One way to address this problem is to put a weight, not too much, but a weight on the flapper valve, and perhaps just on the leading edge, and maybe an inch and a half inward so that it does not actually go over the hole but maybe just an inch and a half, inch and three quarter from the edge. I don't know if you can see that. There's not much sunlight uh, 
in here just to weigh down that edge and get a f little better um, air seal because as it is that bow uh, even as the device is operating is going to cost us some air loss I will now show it being op operated with the wiffle board off so you can see that flapper valve working okay first off see this controller for speed it's attached to battery by alligator clips it's connected to connectors get rid of it throw it away or put it for some other project it's garbage instead of using this to adjust the speed of the motor depending on the material that you're going uh, you're putting through the device adjust the device itself adjust the angle of this um, the wiffle board or adjust the angle of the hopper you don't need this and it's just one more thing to go wrong get rid of it you also want the power cord to be as short as possible uh, because it's DC 12 volts and you also want to make sure that the I did this deliberately no really I did you want to make sure that the power line does not foul your crank so you want the battery over here that's slightly better the push rod goes in here and it's going to make some noise you can address adjust partially how much air you're forcing through there by adjusting the push rod raising and lowering that push rod but not by a whole lot personally I would just leave it at the maximum so that it closes all the way and then make my adjustments like I said adjust the angle of the wiffle board and the angle of the hopper let's give it a run like I said get rid of this damn thing I do not know if you can see it, but that flapper valve is not closing. Part of that will be due to the unrestricted airflow going out. If I put the wiffle board in there, it'll be a little bit better. As it is, the only reason why the material would work down the wiffle board is because it is being shaken, not because air is blowing through there very well. This is a drain hole if you want to wash it out with a garden hose. The first thing that needs to be done is the modification on the support bar or support dowel, whatever. You can see where that has been wearing as the hopper moves left and right and you can probably see how it has bowed a little you can also remove this if your material either gets hung up or you want to adjust the flow rate you can open and close that hole depending on what you're going through 
what you're putting through. You want to use a classifier, of course, before you put the material in the hopper so that you cut down the size of the material going in. Anyhow, that's the introduction for the modifications for the Keen Industry Dry Washer. It's going to take me a couple of weeks to do all the modifications that are necessary in my opinion.